Welcome. My name is Terence Soule, and this video is a quick introduction to the Scratch interface. Scratch is an online programming environment developed at MIT. It looks, frankly, a little sort of childish for, say, middle schoolers, but it is a fully functional programming language. It's often great for testing out ideas and sort of getting comfortable with programming. So assuming that you've already set up your account, which is free, then you will have a section called My Stuff, which is generally where you want to start. And you'll see I have lots of stuff. But in particular, what we want to do is start with a new pro project. So projects are basically our programs. And this will take you to the Scratch interface. So here we go, creating a project. So Scratch is a combination of block-based, so the programming is done with program blocks rather than having to type everything out, and sprite-based, so what you're doing is writing programs that control sprites. And so the programming interface is a window divided into a number of different panes. The one in the upper right here is where the program will run, and so this is Scratch, the mascot, if you will, for the Scratch programming environment. And all of your sprites will show up and run there. You can expand this to full size using this button. In a typical program, you'll have more than one sprite, and all the sprites that are active in the program are in this pane. This smaller, narrow pane over here to the far right is for the backdrop, so the backgrounds of your, image, your program. So in this case, I have a white background, but you can add other backgrounds. This big middle pane is where you do the actual programming, and you program by dragging over blocks and dropping them in. So there can put in a couple of blocks. And now this program is associated with this sprite. And if I had another sprite, then I would have a separate, when I selected it, a separate window here, a separate pane for that sprite. As you can see over on the left is where the program blocks are that you can choose from and it is quite a long list, so this scrolls down. And they are color coordinated, and in addition to the colors, there's even further left, you can select which group of commands you wanna look at. So the first one in blue here, it's a little hard to read, but that's motion, so that controls how sprites move. The second one is looks, that controls how sprites look, including things that they say, changing colors, their size, and so forth. The third one is for sound, so there's a small built-in sound library. And then down here, as long as I'm mentioning libraries, there's a button that allows you to incorporate other libraries, for example, to get more options for sound. There's a block of events, so that controls events that determine how the sprites move, control, and so forth. So each of these different colors corresponds to a different type of program instructions or commands, and all of them are represented by blocks that you can drag over. As a quick example, so I'll come down here to sprites, and you'll notice there's this little choose a sprite button, which gives you a couple of different options for choosing sprites. You can upload a sprite, and in this context, a sprite is just an image, ideally something like a PNG with a transparent background, and you want a transparent background so that the sprite doesn't show up as a square with some weird background on it. You can surprise as a random one. There's a built-in very simple paint program so that you can paint your own sprites within Scratch, or you can use a more sophisticated paint program and then import them. What I want to do is just pull up the choose a sprite. So there's a library of sprites that you can choose from, and they're categorized in different ways. I don't know, I'll go to animals, for example, and we can pull in a dinosaur. And you'll notice some of them give you different images so that you can animate your sprites a little bit. And we won't cover that in this video, but that is a possibility to pick a sprite that has an animation associated with it. Not all of them do, but definitely some of them. Um, I don't know, I'll pick, let's see, how about a giraffe? That looks like fun. So now I have a giraffe, which is also in my program. You'll notice that in this pane, I now have both Scratch and the giraffe. The giraffe is selected. There's a trash can if I decide I want to get rid of it, but it's selected and it has no program associated with it. 
Whereas if I go back to scratch, I can see the things that I dragged over from before are now associated with scratch. And so each sprite has its own code that runs separately. And that's sort of necessary so that the sprites can do different things. And built into Scratch are a bunch of different ways, some of them fairly sophisticated, for sprites to interact. So they run their own code, but they can also interact with each other through their code. So that's the basic idea. Program runs in the upper right. The selection of sprites is in the lower right backdrops are in the far right, and we have the same choose a backdrop option. So maybe I will demonstrate that real quick. I'll choose a backdrop. Again, it's just a library of images. Uh, here's a nice beach. So now I have the beach as a backdrop. And just like with sprites, you can upload your own image as a backdrop. You can paint your own image within Scratch as a backdrop, lots of options. Same thing is true for sound, although I haven't talked about the sound code very much. You can import musical tracks if you want. So again, there's really a lot of power built into Scratch in terms of creating complicated programs with, as you can see, if you want photorealistic, you can bring in those sorts of images, cartoons. We saw ways to animate our sprites, at least very briefly. And so lots of capabilities, even if the interface makes it look a little childish. Don't, don't be fooled. It's quite a powerful programming language. And then the last thing, if I go to, in particular, under events, just to give you a feel for how this works, the, one of the major events that you use a lot is when the green flag is clicked. And the green flag is this one here that's basically go. So it tells your program to start running. So when I click this, it will run this code, which I mostly picked at random, but there's a little bit of move and a little bit of turn, and it only applies to scratch. So when I click the green flag, you can see he moves a bit and turns a bit. The draft, of course, does not move at all because there's no code associated with the draft. So there we go, sprites, and we can import more backdrops, and we can pick the one we want, and then lots of instructions that we can put into our code. The final thing I'll say is Scratch is a very robust programming language. You can't really break anything. You can't set anything on fire. So just from the simple introduction, feel free to like, grab some instructions. Huh, this says play sound meow until done. I wonder what that does. Well, it plays a meow sound, right? Go ahead, feel free to experiment. You can't hurt anything and you will certainly learn more about how the programming interface and how Scratch works. Excellent, thank you.